Folks, I think we got our first dragon of 2023. 20, this is a really good fish. Really good fish. Hey there, folks. Welcome back to Cambo Trout Fishing. Today's video, we're out there taking advantage of this freakishly warm February that we're having this year. But we're also going to be battling against that four-letter word that I despise, the wind. I'll pass along some tips for fishing in February for snakehead, other species as well. But what you'll see, as much as anything else, is some beautiful water, some great fish, and the incredible amount of impact that that wind can have on your day. Let's go fishing. So first, I want to thank my sponsors, in particular for this video, Delaware Paddle Sports and Yaxpedition. They're the reasons that I have this incredible kayak and trailer you're going to see out here. Thanks to Anglers for hooking me up with some great minnows for this trip. And with that said, let's head on east to Maryland's Eastern Shore to chase those snakehead. Folks, I really haven't seen anything yet. This wind is keeping these water temps down. Right now, it's about one o'clock in the afternoon. We're starting to creep up towards that 50 degree mark, which in my experience is usually the magic number to have a pretty solid day on the water for snakehead. But as of yet, we are not there. The wind continues to blow and I haven't had so much as a hit yet. But we're gonna keep at it. Here we are. Here we are. We have a snake, folks. We have a snake. We just dinged 50 degrees. And I'm about gosh darn convinced that's the key. This is the first hit I have had. Hold on a second, I got a video running right here for about geopolitics. <laughs> but this is the first snakehead first hit of any kind I've had all day. Get in there. There you are. All right. Holy crap, folks. We've beat the skunk. <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. I really just about resigned myself to going home with nothing today. And over there is a fishing vest, it looks like. I might try to recover that and check it out. All right. Let me get my 360 on. There we go. Okay. Whew. All right. It seems like I'm pretty safe and stationary here. This wind is blowing. You can see it out here. It's ridiculous. And that's really been the death knell for what otherwise could have been a really, really good day out here. Sorry about the wind. I'm sure it's making audio just terrible out here, but it is what it is. It's like the air temp is close to 60. If this wind weren't blowing, we would most definitely be having a fire day out here. But as it is, one and only hit, one hit so far today. I've been out here since about 10, 10.30. It's now about three o'clock in the afternoon. First hit right here. Oh, I'm so happy I landed that fish. <laughs> I'm so happy I landed that fish. <laughs> All right, let's get to handling her. Come here, you little beauty. Uh, yeah, you can tell. That water is much colder today. You can tell from the activity level of the fish, both in the water and out. A warmer snakehead would not be this docile, but these snakes are cold, boy. Cold, but there she is. We have a fish. <laughs> Why are you bleeding? Where are you hooked? Uh, you took it kind of deep, but not super deep. That again is the Z-Man bullseye minnow spinnerbait with a four inch pearl color diesel minnow. Let's get you washed off. She's trying. <laughs> She's trying to be feisty, but she is cold. That's a cold fish. If you haven't used that cinematic function yet on the newer iPhones, it is remarkable. So here it is, folks. At long last, we have a snakehead today. It was not 
easy. Hopefully we get some more on my way out of here. I'm not super optimistic, I'll be honest. It's been a slow day. First hit of the day right here. And we've just crested 50 degrees. It's not a coincidence. It's been in the low 40s when I got here, mid 40s most of the day. And again, that's because of the wind. When you have that wind action, it prevents the water from warming up or at the very least slows it down. But hey, the sun is out the boat. All right, folks, not much time. Let's get back to it. GoPro, start recording. Folks, I think we got our first dragon of 2023. I think we got our first dragon of 2023. God, I'm so glad I made that cast. I almost didn't. I almost did not make that cast. This is a really good fish. Really good fish. <laughs> Oh, folks, Ugh. that's why you stick with it, man. You all ready to see this fish? Because I am. Oh, wow. Whoa. If she's not a dragon, I'm telling you, she is not far off. Whew. We might turn this day around after all, folks. I had a feeling about this flat. I had a feeling about this flat out here. It did well for me last time. It's definitely still producing. When you stay out of the way, you come off, there we go. Now I can get some grips in her. Oh, now that's a good snake. That's a really good snake. I don't think she'll hit um, yeah, I don't think that she'll hit 30, but she'll definitely go high 20s all day. You gorgeous fish, you. Oh, look at him crushing those lip grippers. Look at him crushing it. <laughs> He's biting the crap out of it. <laughs> oh, wow. And both fish today, folks, on artificials. Go figure. I think she'll go probably 28, 27, 28. But what I will do is get a weight on her, assuming I remembered my scale, and I think I did. We have coming in just under seven pounds, 6.92, almost seven pounds. So yeah, I'm gonna put her at 26, 27. Let's see, how big are you? This fish, hey, get back up there. This fish will come in at 27 and a half. What a gorgeous fish. You don't get, get a, you don't get a much better eater sized fish than that. I'm gonna tell you that right now. You beautiful fish. Thank you so much. <laughs> She's a feisty one. All right, I'm gonna dispatch this beauty, take her home to the family, and I will catch back up with y'all once I get back to fishing. Well, folks, you hear me talk a lot with winter snakehead fishing about that period from around 2 p.m., 1 or 2 p.m. till about 5 p.m. Now, it took a lot longer today to get started, again, because of this filthy wind out here that should now just start dying down. But that's when that water's had maximum time to heat up. If that water's too cold, those snakehead are not gonna feed, man. At least not in quantities or voraciously enough for it to, generally speaking, be worth your time. But that is that magical period during the day, during the winter, where you have your best shot at snakehead. That one got me fired up. <laughs> it's too bad I didn't have the camera rolling, but honestly, that's only my second hit of the day. It's, I, I honestly turned off the cameras. So I was just like, to heck with it. You know, I'm not even gonna waste the battery power or the memory or anything else. Because by and large, it's just, 
<laughs> there hasn't been anything moving, man. I mean, there's been virtually nothing moving out here. Now, it came off of over there, off of that exposed piece of root system, roughly speaking anyway. That's about where he was. It would be nice to see at least one float drop today. So, I mean, yeah, do I prefer artificial? Yeah, of course. But I do like watching a float drop. Boy, I like it. Especially with snake because you get to see those bubbles come up. <laughs> Such a great feeling. Well, folks, the owls are starting to call. <laughs> you hear that? It'd be great to have something to cast at that's reliable, but I mean, it's hard to develop a pattern when you've had two hits all day and those two hits came from two very different places. <laughs> so, I mean, I've casted at everything today. I've cast it up to shore. I've cast it to the stump fields. I've cast it to the what used to be the pad fields and the root systems. I've cast it to open water, flats. I've casted just about everything. First fish came on an area, or from an area, where I would say it was kind of like two to three feet deep, adjacent to stumps, a couple stumps in the area. And it was actually windy. That, that shoreline was windy. I just wanted to give it a shot. I mean, it paid off. Somewhat by chance, but hey, I'll take it. That last one came from this open flat, way out in the middle. I mean, kind of near some exposed root structure, but, you know, not right on it. My cast wasn't that good for that to be the case. But, I mean, that's it. Two hits. Two hits all day. You got to really love fishing and really love snakehead fishing to put in this kind of time, drive this kind of distance <laughs> for two fish all day. Now, granted, that second one definitely made up for it because that's a solid fish. Certainly my biggest of 2023. My biggest per preceding that I think was 25 and a half, 26. So I beat it by about an inch and a half. But you know, at the end of the day, it ain't that much. But this wind now, this wind is starting, just starting to die down. If I can get this wind to die, we might and I caution might start seeing some boils or some rises. That would be fantastic because then at least I have something to cast to. You know, it's not like I'm just fan casting to everything, hoping that there's a fish there that wants to bite. But even then I question the odds of me seeing any risers or any boils from feeding fish because I just don't think the water temperature is high enough, to, you know, to induce that kind of activity. Water temp right now, 49.1. That ain't that warm. Now it's borderline. Like my magic temp for having a good day snakehead fishing is usually low 50s. If I really want to get out there, 50 degrees even, you know, like today. But low to mid 50s is what I prefer as a minimum to go out snakehead fishing and expect to have a good day. But I say, oh. I just saw a boil that definitely looked like feeding. That looked like a big fish chasing a little fish. You hear that, Al? That's one thing I love about the Eastern Shore. You can really get out into nature. Love hearing stuff like that. Well, I do and I don't. It's a very cool noise. I think owls are fascinating. He appreciates my assessment. <laughs> but with that said, it also means my day of fishing is almost coming to an end. I don't like that part. Oh, oh. Fish, we got a fish. We got a fish, I don't know what yet. Doesn't feel like a snakehead. Not yet, anyway. What do we got? No, he's running. He's running. What is this? I'm going with bass or crappie. Oh, it's a monster crappie. Oh, get off my stringer. Ha ha ha. 
Oh man, you made my day, buddy. Look at that, will you? <laughs> yes! All these fish are going to start feeding in this last hour. <laughs> look at that. And look at the shoulders on that beauty. Y'all see those shoulders? Oh, what a gorgeous fish. I'd estimate and say 13. Let's see. Mouth closed. God, the thickness on these fish. No, he's right at 14. Wow, he's bigger than I thought. Well, I mean, just under 14. Yeah, we'll call him 13 and three quarters. What a beautiful fish. God, I love, oh, <laughs> I love slab crappy. Y'all know how I feel about my slabs. Look at the shoulders on her. Look at that. You see that? Ugh, the thickness on these fish. <sighs> Thank you, beautiful. Mwah. Oh, gorgeous fish here. Now, why do I let giant crappy like that go? Because that's the breeding stock for us to keep catching crappy. That's exactly why. Now, some places you can go in the States, United States, that is, in case you have any foreign, uh, like, international viewers right now. <laughs> There's some places in the United States you can go where a fish like that, I should have got a weight on her, but I estimate somewhere like around two, two and a half. Some places you go in the United States, that's an average fish. Here in Maryland, that's a big breeder. Crucial if you want to keep that stock healthy. <sighs> Feels so good. <laughs> All right, minis, come here. Give me a biggie. There's a biggie. That's a giant, holy crap. Folks, when I say it is beautiful out, words cannot do it justice. The wind has finally, at long last, died down. And now, we can start to appreciate this place in all of its <laughs> glory. It's so pretty. Come on, fish. Start giving... Oh, saw that over there? That was a fish. That was a fish all day. Oh, again? That's the only thing out here is... There's so much crap on the bottom to get snagged on. Like if you don't maintain tension on your float lines, you end up getting wrapped around all these root structures down there. But you know, it's kind of the price you pay for the root structure that is attracting the fish you want to catch. So it is what it is. Just a bit of a hassle to deal with this kind of fishing style. All right, place your bets. What's going next? Is it going to be a lure fish or is it going to be a minna fish? Right now, it is two to one in favor of the lures. Doesn't mean it's going to stay that way, though. God, I could stand up now. Standing up earlier would have turned me into a kite and had me drifting even farther. <laughs> or not a kite, but a sail, rather, for my kayak. A few moments later. Well, folks, you won't see it because I didn't have the camera rolling, but I just lost one. No! Oh, please, God, no! He bent my hook out, if that gives you idea about the scale of the fish. Now granted, the head shakes from a snakehead are so powerful that even a five or six pound snakehead can bend a lot of the hooks that are out there, but this is a pretty heavy duty hook. Ugh. Oh, it hurts so bad. Are you crying? No. Yes. Hopefully he'll find my minnows in a minute and I can get him. <laughs> you rascal. Son of a gun. Shut up, Heron. You old dinosaur. I don't want to hear no lip from you. You don't even have lips. <laughs> well, folks, we're in the closing last few minutes here. Aside from the wind ruining what could have been a phenomenal day, I'm still walking away from this quite happy. The crappy, the snakehead that I caught, although I did lose one that bent my hook out, that one's gonna stick with me for a little bit, but 
if you can see what it looks like right now, let me make sure. There we go. The wind has finally died and the rising and the action has begun. I think it'll last, judging from the sun, probably another 20 minutes, 30 at most, and then that'll be it. But boy, so beautiful, so beautiful out here. Folks, there are fish rising everywhere. Oh. There he is. Fish on. Fish on. Pretty sure it's a snake. He's running right at me, though. What is that? What is that? Holy crap. I think that crappy's even bigger than my first one. Holy crap. Folks, that's why I love this place. <laughs> One more jumbo slab to close out the day. There's those shoulders again. Look at them. This is why a forage base, a quality forage base, is so crucial for a great river. You beauty. Mwah. Well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll do a recap of the lures in a bit. But hey, do me a favor. Hit that like button if you really enjoyed it. Subscribe and let me know below in the comments section. <laughs> there you go, beauty. If these fish keep hitting like this, I'm going to be loading up in the dark. This is an awesome bite. I'm telling you, the whole day could have been like this if it weren't for the freaking wind. Oh, that darn wind. Could have been tearing fish up all day. Ooh, that looks like a snake too. Ooh. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that was a snake. Short striking son of a gun. And folks, with that unfortunate short strike right there, that pretty much rounded out the day. I had to get on the road so I could load up when I still had some light in the sky. But despite the wind, making the first four to five hours of this trip an absolute chore. <laughs> Persevered, and once we hit the afternoon, around four o'clock, when that wind finally started to lay down, that's when the majority of those bites really started to happen. That, and the other key point, again, was that water getting up near that 50 degree mark. Now to recap the lures and techniques, most effective lure, without a doubt, the only one that caught fish out there, was the Z-Man Bullseye Spinnerbait with a 4-inch pearl-colored diesel mill. You saw I caught the two slab crappy. Gotta love those things. Those came on live minnows. I got those minnows from Angler Sports Center, but there's a lot of other good shops that you can get those from. And in terms of the rig for that float system, I was pretty much fishing it roughly about a foot at most beneath the surface. And that's because this particular body of water is virtually uniformly shallow. Very rarely do you find any areas that are deep enough to make it any deeper than that for that float minnow combination. So, all in all, grateful for one more beautiful day on the water. Thanks very much to my wife, Adrienne, for covering down on the kids today. Watch that forecast. Look out for those days that are gonna have warming trends and then target those afternoons on the second or third day of that warming trend. Because if you do, Odds are you can get those wintertime snakehead and maybe some awesome bycatch like some slab crappy as well. Thanks for watching folks. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. And have a good one.